the children and families pastor here, so church might look a little bit different today. Um, But before we start, I'm just going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you that we can be here today. I thank that you're here with us, and I also thank you that you are the creator of joy and that you want us to be happy. I thank you that joy, we found joy, find joy in you. And I just pray a blessing on this word that I'm about to bring. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now I am just in need of some volunteers. I need about four or five volunteers that can come up and help me. Is there anybody out there that wants to be a volunteer this morning? It's for a game. Yeah? No kids? Yep, come on up. Come on. Yep, this is it. All right. Who else is coming up? Oh, great. Yep, come on up, Sam. Who else is coming up? Oh, yep, cool. All right, come on up. All right. Here we go. Here is something I've prepared earlier for you all. Thank you very much. I mean, I thought we had somebody else coming up. Okay. All right. So you do need a little bit of space. Oh, great. This is a small one, so good luck with that. Okay. So what I want you to do, no, no, take it off your hips. We're starting on our arms. I just want you to do it on your arm. Can you make the hula hoop spin on an arm? Oh, very good. Come on. Okay, now, now we're, we're going to the trick phase, okay? I want you to transition it from one arm to the other arm. Whoa! <laughs> All right, now we're going to the expert level, okay? I want you to now transition the hula hoop up over your body and down to your hips. <laughs> Uh. All right, that was a pretty good effort. Okay, thanks for my hula hoopers. I think we can probably... Now, (laughs) Um, so that looked a lot of fun, didn't it? Um, And it probably brings a lot of joy for us to see things like that. It's easy to have joy when we're happy and we're celebrating. Um, But it's not always the case. And in the Bible, God doesn't say that he's going to give us good times all the time. He doesn't say that we get to play games every day. He does say, however, that in those hard times, we can have joy. So today, we're going to look at the um, passage in Acts 16, verses 16 to 40. Um, And I'm going to need some help for this. So Paul and Silas, can you come and join me on stage? Okay, so here we have our Paul and Silas. You might need to come a little bit this way. Thanks. All right, now they'd been traveling around and they'd come to this little town called Philippi. And they'd heard about a prayer meeting, so they were heading to the prayer meeting one day when a person who was possessed by a demon came along. And what did this person say to them? He started shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God and who are here to tell you how to be saved. Now, that doesn't sound like uh, like bad news, does it? Seems like he's telling the truth or she's telling the truth. Um, (laughs) Everywhere they went, he followed them, though, and continued to announce, These men are servants of the Most High God and are here to tell you how to be saved. I think um, after a day or two, this would have been quite annoying. Um, In fact, Paul was getting quite annoyed. After a couple of days, following around and saying, These men are our servants of the Most High God and are here to tell you how to be saved. Paul snapped. He really got quite annoyed. He turned around and he said, In the name of Jesus, I command you out of her. You see... (laughs) You see, there was an evil spirit in her, him. Um, And on on hearing Paul's words, 
the spirit left them and he went away. And you'd think that was a good thing, right? Because, you know, we're not having any more demons. But the people who were making money out of our little um, friend, because he was actually quite a good um, fortune teller, and um, so they got quite upset because they could no longer make any money from him. And so they got the local police to come along. <coughs> and Paul, Paul and Silas were put into jail. <laughs> now, I don't know how you would feel, but I don't think I'd be so happy about that situation. Um, I think I'd be pretty upset and probably a little bit angry at God because all they were doing was telling people about Jesus and that. But do you know what? Paul and Silas were not mad at all. In fact, they, what did they start to do? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my H-E-A-R-T. And I'm so happy, oh so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Do you think we can join them for one more time? Let's go. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my H-E-A-R-T. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I mean, that is pretty amazing. They had joy in a situation I couldn't imagine. Locked up, limited daylight, little food, nothing else to do, but they could praise God. They found joy in this situation. God was their joy and their strength. What an incredible thing. But this isn't where the story ends. While they were praising God, there was an earthquake. Their chains fell off and their jail cell fell open. They could have escaped easily and left this terrible place behind, but they stayed where they was. The jailer came back. They were so worried that their prisoners had escaped. They were about to kill themselves. When, Paul said, don't do it, we're here. <gasps> A miracle. The jailers were so happy that they took him back to their house for lunch. And do you know what? While they were there, Paul and Silas shared about Jesus. And that very day, Paul, the jailers' families became Christians and were baptized. Now, that's a pretty incredible story. And it's a lot of fun to tell. Um, but can you imagine the celebration that the jailers would have had that day? You know, they'd gone from total despair to total joy, and they'd found it in the Lord. Um, Paul and Silas found joy in such a hard situation because they looked to God and not to each other. God was their joy and their strength. As they found joy, their attitude um, was witnessed to other people. And those people, then they were able to lead other people to Jesus as well. God wants us all to know his joy. And he wants us to find it in whatever circumstance we're in. Whether we are sick or healthy, whether we are, that, uh, we are ready to be the next Ronaldo, or we are so worried every time they're picking teams at school for sports, whether or not we are wealthy, or we're really worried about how we're going to put food on the table next week. He wants us to praise him. Um, if we are enjoying and being invited to all the parties or if we're really sad and lonely. Um, he wants us um, to find joy in him when we are facing, when we're really worried about going to school um, or 
we're really excited to be there and we love our teacher. God wants um, our, the joy that we find in him to be our strength in every situation. And he wants us to help us in t- hard times and hard spaces. Let the joy that you find in him guide you whatever you're facing. He has the ability to help you find joy. This morning, if you are needing a little bit of an injection of joy, we would love to pray for you. Um, We have the staff and leadership available at the front, um, and as we sing these next few songs, this is a really short message because we've got kids here, um, if you would just like to come up to the front and we can pray for you um, in whatever you're facing, that would be great. Thank you.